Hey guys, uh, this is future me putting this in uh, after the recording because I forgot to say some stuff. Uh, really quickly, I just want to say that uh, my background to give you tips on behalf of paintball, um, I've been playing paintball divisionally since 2007 and I've been coaching uh, high divisional, high divisions, uh, actually all divisions since uh, 2017. So the reason behind this is because a lot of the things that I've learned in paintball carries over to Hunt Showdown specifically. This doesn't really work with any other FPS game, but I found that in Hunt Showdown it works actually pretty perfectly. So that's all I wanted to say um, before I get chastised or anything, that this is not paintball. I understand that. It's just that this is my background um, and the things I've learned, again, the things I've learned in paintball work very, very, very perfectly for Hunt Showdown. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, and I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Hey everyone, uh, I figured I would take this time to make a little tips and tricks video, uh, essentially of what I've learned over the course of playing Hunt, seeing as it's a very different shooter game from every other shooter game on the market. Uh, it's, of course, not extremely different, but a lot of things that you learn in other FPS games are not going to be directly taken and thrown into this one. Of course, you know, you can, but it's not really a run-and-gun type of shooter. Um, it's very, 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 very reliant on audio. I guess it's... I guess I've never played Tarkov, but I guess you could say it's close to Tarkov. Tarkov. Um, so first off, uh, since I, I've played the game... Uh, since its inception, uh, since it was a wee lad, and um, I would figure, you know, whatever I've learned, I would like to just let everybody else know. Hopefully it helps everybody else. So I'm in the tutorial level right now, and I'm going to do in-depth, uh, and more of an in-depth, uh, not really guide, but more in-depth tips than the normal, you know, I'm gonna just going to throw a video together, put my random tip on the screen and not really go more in depth than that. I'm just going to tell you a broad idea and you figure it out. So I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. So first one here is uh, if you're running a silenced weapon and you're in a gunfight, try to shoot crows to mimic other hunters entering the fight or as if you've rotated. This is extremely helpful for applying way more pressure to the other hunters you're fighting or um, uh, making it seem like you're doing something you're not. So let's see, again, we're, we're fighting here the uh, bounty and we have crows over here. Now what we can do is like, if we're playing off of these trees or we're even in these woods, cause people like to bump on this um, location, this compound at this opening. Um, so let's say if we're fighting here and we want to mimic as if we're gonna rotate right um if we're playing let's say we're playing off this tree we're fighting whoever's here we get a pop we pop them once they go to heal we can come back out of course we can't see the crows from here but because we know that they're here we can try to shoot the general area i'll just actually come up this way we can shoot them there we go that was weird so we could shoot them as if you know we're rotating um but we're still we're still back this way, and we can we can even duck into here and just kind of wait it out a little bit, um, making it seem like we've already moved all the way over that way. This also helps though, uh, in the event that you're fighting, let's say someone on the road here, and you're worried about you know them pushing or you're not getting the greatest shots on them. You can let's say the husk is the enemy hunter. You can hit them once and then kind of come in to where your line of sight is now obscured from them. They can no longer see you, and you can just wait it out a little bit. Um, pretty much what I would like to do is try to get an idea as to how much time would it take for me to get here to there. And so, yeah, I would shoot. Oh, he's going to come after me. Um, I would shoot him, and then I would wait. And then I would hit them, let them fly off, make it seem like I'm moving on them. They get worried, and I'm already in here. You know, I'm actually moving... Uh, left inside of the compound so that is that is a very good one i i like to do a lot um if me or um my team which is my brothers on 100 percent of the time if me or my brothers are playing and you know I, I, if i'm fighting 
and I'm kind of pressured or I can't get anything going on, I like to see if there's crows around and try to get them moving, try to get the crows moving and seeing if I can get those uh, to go anywhere else. This ex this works especially well when you're on a compound and like, let's say there's crows over here and you're fighting the team right here. Um, and let's say they don't have bounty yet. Of course, this can always change. They can always get bounty so they can see through your, you uh, not, they could see through your um, shenanigans. I, I'll just call it, <laughs> they'll see through your shenanigans. But if they don't have sight yet and you're f shooting this, you know, you could duck down, see that the birds like are, are on these uh, arches here and you could shoot the arches, let them fly off. They think that they're getting pushed now from over there and you can continue to kind of push um, peak over here. But that also leads me into my very next one. Um, do not re-peak. Do not re-peak the same spot. Re-peaking the same spot is very, very bad. Um, in my background of paintball um, and being very high on the divisional ladder, essentially what it is is if you were to keep re-peaking the same spot over and over, you're, you're going to get killed uh, no matter what. There, one way or another, you're going to keep coming out on the same spot and you're going to get killed. Now, coming taking from paintball and I apply it to Hunt Showdown because, again, Hunt Showdown is a very slow game and 9 out of 10 of the things I do in paintball works here in Hunt Showdown. So I'm very confident that this is, this is a tried and true method. Um, so what it is is if, let's say you are fighting someone on this tree. And you just you're too worried about getting over to them because you have three shots left or something, um, and you know what have you. You can't shoot through the tree. So what's going to happen is if let's say it's the very very refresh. You both just you both just um, reloaded, and we're going to see what happens. You come out and you shoot. You miss your shot. They hit you. You come back and heal. Typically they're going to rush you, right? Um, or let's say you hit your shot, or let's say you both miss. Uh, we'll go with the miss. So you both miss, it does not help to keep coming back out like this. Because especially if you have a beat like, you know, left, right, left, right, left, right. Typically, if they understand that you're, you've got a rhythm going on, they'll just, they'll just sit out on you. And then they'll wait, you know, left, right, left, right, left, right. So eventually they'll sit right here, and then you'll say, left right left boom you're dead so um and, and also re-peaking it just it doesn't help especially from a, a very far situation like if they're up here on the rafters if they shoot at you or let's say you shoot at them they run around you shoot at them again you keep shooting at them and then they they find out where you're at they come up they poke over top they shoot at you you come back out or you go in and then you come back out again let's say they miss again but you you go in you, you reload you come back out you know you're 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 allowing them to stay out on you and ha allowing them to have the line of sight on you and pretty much you're giving them you're giving them the kill they just have to wait for it um essentially because they haven't hit you the first few times they gotta wait until they do get you so it's it's a hard habit to not want to re-peak the same spot, especially windows and stuff. If, let's say I'm fighting a guy right here on the windows and he just keeps coming back. This is a door though, but let's say the window right here. He keeps coming back. I know to wait on him to re-peak that window because he's not going anywhere else. He hasn't fought me from any other angle, so I just wait this out. So, yeah, so like, again, you're fighting this You're fighting this tree here. You you fire on him. If I, I would say... I wouldn't know. I wouldn't even really say re-peaking immediately. So I would just peek it real quick, shoot him, run around the other side. Like you've you've got him thinking you're gonna come out, you know, on his on his right again, your left. So yeah, don't don't continue to re-peak. Um, you know, take the shot, run around. All right. Next one is to move silent but quick and when necessary. Environment sound masks your sound. Uh, which is great because a lot of things that happen in this game very well will mask your sound. Um, unfortunately, uh, emulators are really bad because they will follow you. Same with husks um, and the meatheads. They will all follow you. But what I'm getting at is, so we do have the spider here. Um, I don't think I'm going to run around to get to it. 
but let's say a boss banishes and you know that noise immediately when it banishes the loud noises it starts to make you can use that to your advantage because the people inside banishing the boss are not going to hear you running around they really will not they really will not um so it allows you to it allows you to change positioning if you were in a fight with them earlier or if you were over on this side and you wanted to rotate over here it allows you to move very very quickly but then you got to keep in mind the timing of that loud noise <clears throat> that explosion or whatever noise it makes when it first uh, initially gets uh when it first initially gets uh banished uh you know that that only lasts for so long so kind of kind of get an idea just kind of remember as to okay it's probably going out by now i'll slow it down a little bit you know keep it going a little bit um that's that's totally fine moving moving fast when necessary is uh it, it's very to me it's a very easy thing to understand but when it comes to acting it out and remembering the, that in game it can get kind of it can get kind of haywire um not only this but about when the boss is about 95 percent i'm gonna have to kill these emulators when the boss is about 95 percent um oh god when the boss is about 95 percent uh banished it starts to make that very 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 loud you know uh blowing noise like the the the, the bellowing the, the bellowing sound i guess you could call it it gets very very loud uh essentially that's very a very good time to push on a compound because again if they're not peeking windows if they're not uh if they're not coming out on you and they're just kind of waiting it out um they're they're not gonna they're not gonna hear you coming up and they're not gonna see you coming up so essentially So essentially, it's a very good time to, to uh, push the compound. So uh, it, I would say it starts about nine. I want to say it starts at 90%, but to be safe, 95% is when it gets really, really loud. Uh, that's Again, that's your time. That's when you move silent, but quick when necessary. If someone hears you and they're shooting at you from here, they know they know you're in this general area. Even if they see you, they know that they're you're in this general area. So it doesn't make sense to crouch and just stay crouched and trying to just, you know, run up to run up to the fence and just try to crouch walk the fence because they're already peeking you and watching you and they can see you in, within the slits of the, the boards and stuff. It, it's again, it doesn't make sense to um, it, it doesn't make sense to do that. They're, they see you anyways. Just again in, in paintball, there's only so many bunkers you can get to. They know you're in that general area. You're it doesn't make sense to stay quiet. So again, you know, if if they see you in this area, they know you're in this general area, you can run left, you can run you can run right, you can stay here in the center, you could play them here. Um, try to give them an idea that you're trying to play them here, but you could just make it as a stop, you know, hit them once and then keep going, or even hit them once and come back. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunately it's very down to the situation but we just remember um the environment helps you mask your sound don't think that the environment is against you all the time use it to your advantage you see a lantern on the other side of the uh on the other side of the compound shoot it it makes a noise when it's uh going off you can move quickly uh, next one is if you have a hard time pushing a compound think of you as the one pushing out of the compound and what would be hard for you so this doesn't really apply to campers okay this applies more to aggressive players uh, okay I should say campers that are sitting in corners okay that are just down and they're not peeking you whatsoever they're waiting for you to come in and they have shotguns um, essentially if you have a if you have a hard time pushing there's a team that keeps um dueling you and they're they're not letting up um or they they're they're kind of taking pot shots and going back in and stuff and you just don't really have an idea as to what you want to do think about think about you are the one you are the one in the compound and you're trying to get out of the compound what makes it very very hard for you 
Oh, that's blocked. Okay. So, what will make it hard for you to um, get out of this compound? Now, um, this compound, what is this? Oh, it doesn't even say. I can't remember the name of it. But um, this compound is not the hardest to get out of. Typically, there's the um, extraction over here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's usually right there. But let's say you have... Let's say you're fighting the guys that are up top here. Now, what would he have a problem with? Well, he definitely sees everything out here. So your best bet, if you're the other team, is to not play this portion of the compound. It's just not going to do well for you. As you could see earlier, it was kind of hard to see into here, but for us, we see everything out here, and it's very, very easy. Now, of course, this is tutorial, unfortunately, so this stuff is blocked off. So this kind of really only applies to this section right here, because if you can get up here and stuff and see into the compound, it's going to be more harder for these guys up here to want to be able to stay alive. Um, Let's say this guy's playing the corner and he's trying to take a shot at any teams coming from this way. This this is pretty good for... Over here is okay for the other teams, um, for the teams that are pushing. It's not so bad. You have the uh, bridge to play with. You have under here to play with. Um, again, you have these back borders to play with. You can even come down the waterway, move all the way through, and come up here. So this is a very, very much more ideal uh, area to play off of. Of course, this whole entire area sucks, and I would not play. There's typically, yeah, you can see it out there. There's the uh, extraction. Typically, there's an extraction out there as well. Now, we are inside. Of course, the we have the spider in here, but y you're inside and you're sticking out through the windows. Um, typically, you're you're very very safe in this compound as going in there, uh, being on the inside because you have this to worry about, this to worry about, the rolling front door up here, you have a side door on the b back here that, to worry about, and then you have a double doors back here that you have to worry about. Um, it's it's very very easy to protect yourself. So I'm guess I'm more over talking about the guy on top here. Um, he can play off of this and he can see what's coming in through the waterways. Uh, however, again, this opening is typically where everybody comes from. Now, what does he have to work with? Can he sit here in the back and can he shoot at you from here? Yes. Are you worried about him fighting you from there and then uh, him killing you from here? It's probably not your best bet to come through here. Figure out the secondary way. What is going to be hard for him? Again, as I said earlier, from this guy's point of view, I think, in my opinion... Um, it would be very easy to fight anybody coming over here, uh, or over this way, coming out through these woods. Uh, I'm pretty sure, actually, to be honest, I'm more than positive without tutorial, there's just woods here. It's not this giant mound. It's like a giant thing of woods and then a waterway. So even that, though, is not the best, it's not the best bet. So, in this guy's position... If I was fighting this and I felt like there, I was having trouble, it would be from a team coming this way, coming down the waterway. Because not only can they come up uh, really close right here in the waterway, but they can come up right here. They can come up through the back. They can kind of come up in a spot I cannot see them. Um, I, oh, yeah, right there on the bridge. So, yeah, I would just say sweep around, get in through over that way. Um, so, yeah, again, rounding back to the very beginning find a find a think think about what they're going to have an issue with and fight them from that issue don't just stick yourself in a situation where you think you're going to be good they keep shooting at you you're on the back foot and you don't think as if there's anything you can do because again it's kind of it's much harder to pop heads from this position um than it is from them to shoot you and kill you you're you're a sitting duck in this position again i would run out here um, understanding gun sounds uh, when the gun is shot. This is a huge one. You don't need to remember every single gun in the game. I should read out the rest of it. it helps a lot, especially Sparks and Romero, to understand the shot count, too. Yeah, so um, gunshot sounds are very, very nice to understand. Uh, typically, rifles are very long shots. They shoot, and it kind of just drags out. 
shotguns are very snappy and quick. It's like a it's like a big bang and that's it. Um, it's, it's very nice though when you're going against a Sparks or Romero because again, we're gonna use this uh, example as we did earlier. Let's say this guy is shooting you and um, this also goes to the last example that I just used. It's very, the dynamics of the th situation changes if this guy is using a Sparks. So let's say this guy is using a Sparks. He fires at you and now he has to reload. He has one shot and he needs to reload. That's not very intimidating or very worrisome. He shoots you. You can now move to the entrance you wanted to go through. If you wanted to go through here, he's got to reload. You can come in and you can get behind here. Of course, he'll probably have that reloaded by then. Um, again, you can put him on the back foot. You've moved over here. Shoot him again. Get over to your, uh, en your entry over there. Uh, this goes for in general shots. Just again, in general, um, let's say you're playing or gunfights, I, sh I should say. You're playing off this wagon. You, you're fighting someone over here. You hear the sound of a sparks. So you, you fire on them. You, you know they have to reload. You have a very long open bump that you can do. He's He's got to reload. You know, he's, he's like in this little section here. You peek left, he shoots at you. You come out right, he's got to reload. You're moving up again. You've now put this. You've put this um, uh, wagon in your way. You can continue to bump up. You've got, you've got, oops, you've got all this uh, room to work with. Uh, this is very, very well as well uh, going against Romero's because of the fact that Romero's are, you know, single shot uh, shotguns, and bumping into a compound if you get shot at by one, you can typically understand if you can continue a push or if you need to back off. If you hear the Romero, uh, you know that they've got to uh, break it open and reload so you can continue your push um, very, very easily, especially if they're playing very close, like right here, of course, because it's a Romero. Um, you know, you're fighting off of this wagon here. You shoot, they miss their shot. You've got, you know, you've got the push. So gu understanding gun sounds, gun sounds is very, very nice. Again, you don't need every single one. Um, if you're doing something like, if you, if you're trying to like listen for a Mosin or a LaBelle, I don't think that's very necessary. Uh, will it help? Yes, but again, regardless if it's a Mosin or a LaBelle, you're gonna go down in one or two shots. So um, typically, I like to just keep it to the um, guns with the one shot martinis. Sparks, uh, Romero's. Uh, don't wait to reload when empty unless using a quick reload gun that reloads the gun to full from empty, such as the Berthier, Scott Field Swift, or etc. So this essentially what I'm getting at is um, when you're when you're in a gunfight and you're just shooting and you're just trying to shoot people, um, either putting down either 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 putting down shots to get you from point A to point B. Or you're just trying to get shots don't wait until your last bullet and then sit here and then you know reload it's it, it it pulls you out of the fight allowing the other team to do what they need to do necessary to get the the upper hand on you typically what I always do is after maybe one or two shots um, after one or two shots always reload so sit here I shoot this guy I think I can get him through the wood. I shoot again. I didn't get him. All right, now I'm reloading. I always try to keep, I always try to keep topped off, topped up because of the fact that you do not know um, how much ammo you will need in the progressing fight. Uh, you can, you can typically look at fights such, um, you, you can typically look at fights kind of like. Uh, progressive like a, the beginning of a fight middle of a fight and the end of a fight typically I just look at it as a fight in general so I'm just trying to keep full ammo in case I need it if if let's say they're pushing on me and I'm back behind this gate and they're coming out the front and all three of them are just spilling out I have a full rounds ready I can just start spraying into them if I can get them to, uh, while they're coming out bump out see them coming through if I need to hit through the wall you know, whatever, whatever I might have to do. They're trying to jump through here, and then I can swap to my my pistol. Typically, I'm not running the chain, but 
Uh, just for this purposes, I'm trying to get as much ammo as possible. 